Vito Arugia. Done. He's got this incredible speed and this insane power. His wrestling style is the epitome of speed. When he goes, he goes like a bat out of hell. Pat Glory handing Vito Arugia his first loss of the year. I think Vito understands the pedigree he has. My dad is one of the best wrestlers ever, basically. Like if I'm gonna wrestle, I have to be good. So you talk about being surrounded by champions, Vito's been surrounded by a lot of them. It's Yanni Diakamalis with championship number three. Vito heck falls, heck glory, and he loses to him two weeks later. There's two Vitos. What's wrong with me, man? How could I have such crazy, like, variable in the way I wrestle? I had no idea that this was gonna happen. The times we lose that help us, you know, make the bigger jumps. Everybody has his own time. Now he's his time. This is a coming of age story. I think this is just the beginning. We were in Hershey, Pennsylvania. You know, I remember Spencer, when he won that match, he comes off the match and he goes up and he's banging on the table. I told you, you know, no, nobody can go with me. You know, this is Spencer Lee, who's really reserved. No, I saw him wear his emotion on his sleeve. I go, he's a hawk. trying to get around back. You don't believe that you can beat somebody. You, you train to beat them. Um, in my head, I'm going, I'm going to prepare myself to the point where I can compete. Terry was like, we might want to take a look at this Austin DeSanto guy, too. You gotta watch him, you know, you gotta watch him. What's inside you that boils over when you don't get what you want, that's also a skill. Just gotta channel it the right way. You gotta work on that. Austin DeSanto had to work on it. And DeSanto's gotta be careful. I'm not a social butterfly, man. I'm just not. I like that it's not a team sport. Spencer Lee was unbelievably instrumental in recruiting Austin DeSanto. Everyone was like shocked about that because they thought I'd like hate him or something. And I was like, why not have him come train with me? Spencer Lee is unbelievable. His sophomore year in that finals match at the NCAA tournament was really nothing observable on Matt, functional. One, one instance of a grimace. When I told Tom, Tom's like, how'd you feel? Like, you got, you can't, how, how'd he take you down, you know? And I was like, hey, he hit a single leg and I stepped and I blew my knee out. He's like, your good knee? It's, it's tough to see somebody close go through that. Wrestling for over two years with a torn ACL, don't think about it, worry about your wrestling. It's really hard to talk about shortcomings and the, the errors that I've made. That's exactly what Austin DeSanto needs. He needs patience, he needs understanding, he needs caring, he needs people to lend an ear. It's a beautiful day in Fort Worth, Texas. The host for USA Wrestling Senior National Finals on Flow Wrestling. We've been treated to over two days of thrilling action so far and are ready to conclude with men's and women's freestyle finals. Stakes are high with Olympic aspirations and seating hanging in the balance. Alongside David Bray, I'm Christian Piles. David, what makes these freestyle finals so special? We're gonna see some of the best wrestling you can find inside the United States. We've got NCAA champions, age level world medalists galore. It's gonna be awesome. Cannot wait to get it started. And we're gonna be getting started with 57 kilograms, Spencer Lee versus Nico Megalunas. Tell me a little about this matchup. We got a battle of NCAA champions, Iowa versus Penn State. And Spencer Lee, four years ago in this very building, was the guy that won it, he was looking like Maybe he had a shot to make the Olympic team. Didn't happen then. Here we are four years later. Can Spencer Lee round into Olympic form? We're gonna find out if he's a little bit closer today. At 65 kilograms, everyone talking about Andrew Alirez versus Bo Barlin. Why are fans so excited about Andrew Alirez? Alirez, NCAA champion for Northern Colorado. First one in program history. He looks like he may be ready to contend with the likes of Yanni and Nick Lee, but he's gotta get through Bartlett first, who's super tough. All right, we're gonna be getting started with 57 kilograms, Spencer Lee versus Nico Megalunas, right now. There you see Iowa Spencer Lee, three-time NCAA champion for the Hawks, getting a high five from Tom Brands, Dan Dennis, his coaches. So he's gonna be taking on a very familiar opponent, a former training partner, Nico Megalutis. Yeah, both these guys, same high school, Franklin Regional, and now here they are in the Senior National Finals, and 
worth noting, Spencer Lee doesn't have to be here. He's already qualified for the Olympic trials, but he wants the matches, he wants the experience. He's got a great test coming right up. This was a great match in the Bill Farrell Finals just a couple weeks ago. Now we are back underway, 57. Nico Megalutis coming out. Hard physical hand fight there in the blue, in the white and red for the Hawkeye Wrestling Club. That's Spencer Lee. Underhook right away from Nico Megalutis. Drops to a knee, trying to drop under, get to legs. Spencer Lee in the red singlet. Nico Megalutis. Now short offense position here for Spencer Lee. Pulls Nico down to the mat. He's pretty powerful from this position, and Nico knows it, so he gets back up on his feet. We're back up 27 seconds into this one. Lee with a lot of ways to score. And there you see that pancake takes him right through for two and could have a gut. Could we get two more on the turn here from Spencer Lee? His parterre offense is really good and the Matt official making Nico let go of his hands. Now dropping down to the lace is Spencer Lee transitioned maybe up to a gut wrench and two takedown for Spencer Lee to get it started. Gritty defense there for Megalutis not to go over. He had his arm trapped at Lee and tough fight there. Just 2 0. And that's key. If you want to beat Spencer Lee, there's a good chance he's going to take you down. You've got to avoid those turns. He's so lethal in parterre. If you give up those turns, that, that exposure, either gut wrench or leg lace, the match could be over in a hurry. One of the rare wrestlers with a gut and a lace that are equally good. Low single attack. That's one of Nico's best leg attacks. He can dart in, and even though he's a veteran of the game, he's still just as speedy as ever as Nico Megalutis. Big cut down from 61 kilograms. He's been wrestling at 61 for a while. Now back at 57, the Olympic weight, and a re-attack here from Nico Megalutis, but Spencer Lee able to square up. We've been spending a lot of time in that short offense position, and the feeling maybe he wants to wear on Megalutis this first period. Back to our feed, 125 remaining. Back to period action, 122 to go. 57 kilos for the championship. Sweep single, deep shot there for Nico Megalutis, defended well by Spencer Lee, he's able to square up with him. And now this is where Spencer can really make you pay the price for that leg attack. Minute six to go. And he darts in on that high crotch, he's in deep, but you see Nico Megalutis catches the foot for his action, but we're gonna see him driving over on two takedown, two confirmed. And now maybe going to work on the top position again as Spencer Lee, he's up 4-0, 53 to go. So far, Nico defending well, parterre. Megalutis, a lot of effort in that bottom position. Lee got to that high cross position so quickly. His speed to the leg is really, it really sticks out watching him, how quickly he's able to level change and dart in on that high crotch. There, another floor. You see, so powerful from that right side underhook. Can just throw it by. Twenty-six to go. Four-zero lead for Spencer Lee, and Nico Megalus. He just never stops moving. Tenacious at all times. But now, once again, in that kind of over-under short offense position, where Spencer scores a lot of points. Ten to go now. Megalutis gonna head into the break, trailing 4-0. And it was the second period in their Bill Farrell match where Megalutis was really able to make up some ground. So going into this break 4-0, you gotta imagine Megalutis probably not super concerned. He knows he's gotta to get to work, but I think he believes he can do it. No question about it. Nico has the offense to come from behind. There's that opening pancake from Spencer Lee for two. Megalutis a little bit from a, a different era in terms of Working and training, you don't see that as much anymore. It's working for him as we're underway, second period. 4-0 lead for Spencer Lee. Leg attack, looking for that same high crotch, not there. This time, Nico Megalutis clears out of it. Megalutis picking up his footwork a little bit. Ooh, nice low single, but look at this re -tie. Head in the hole goes Spencer. Running behind, he's close to the two, puts the knee down, there's two more. 6-0 lead for Spencer Lee. And now he goes head between the legs, lays. But Nico able to defend. Both Spencer and Austin DeSanto had a lot of success getting turns from that position. 
though not in this instance for Spencer Lee. 220 to go as Underhook darts in on the single again does Nico Megalutis. Wizard there from Spencer Lee. Nico above the knee trying to get up to a standing position on this single. Now he's up to his feet. Spencer trying to get that foot on the mat. Defending well Spencer Lee, but Nico improving his position. And there's gonna be two blue. Nico Megalutis on the scoreboard. Getting the leg and he, did he motion to the corner for the break? Did he want two and two? I, I think two, just two was the right call. I agree. Just the two for Nico off that single leg. Nice shot. Now he's trying to dart in again and again on that single leg. This time can't get in. Spencer catches the shot and he's got him over under. This is a position where Nico has to remain vigilant. Kind of an inside reach there for Nico with that right hand, kind of propping that leg up. And the hand fight not slowing from Nico. He is getting his hands and feet moving. But just as I say that, high crotch, Spencer Lee trying to work for two more. Nico trying to work a counter. He's attacking through the crotch of Spencer Lee. He's got his hands locked, but Spencer looks like he's still comfortable working through this position, trying to finish. Minute 12 to go here, fun scramble. Hard to say who's gonna score. As I say that, Spencer may be improving his position. Could be able to take Nico over the top. Trying to come all the way behind is Spencer Lee. One minute to go. Threatening a crossface cradle. Maybe a bit reckless from Spencer. Is now we're in Nico that's looking to finish a leg attack of his own. As Spencer catching the ankles. Trying to turn and face is Spencer Lee. Nothing as Spencer catches that inside reach on the leg. What a fun scramble this has been. And now could it be Spencer that ends up with the two? Trying to pop his head out, he's attacking the head. Will he work to get Hyder? He's just gonna hang on with this lock. Near leg now in for Nico Megalutis. Back and forth we go in this exchange, 20 to go. And this is eating up a ton of clock for Nico Megalutis. Now the foot is on the outside as opposed to being between the legs. That's a better position for Spencer Lee as he's slowly, methodically working to a little bit better position, but really it's just a position that's eating time. Seconds tick away, and that's how this one's gonna end. It's a 6-2 win for Spencer Lee. Fun final scramble there. That high crotch extends the entire second, uh, final minute of this second period, David. You know, you said, you said the word methodical, and that's what was going through my mind throughout, Spencer Lee so fast to the leg, and then it just looked like slowly solving the puzzle, trying to get the takedown. At a certain point, he realized he didn't need it. He could ride it out for the stalemate, just kind of stay down in there, and he got it done. Spencer Lee wins the Bill Farrell, now wins Senior Nationals. Looking good. Great performance for Spencer Lee. He's gonna get another cowboy hat, but let's take a look at some of the action there. As you see that opening pancake. Again, high crotch is so fast, and you see he's able to finish that and ends up winning 6-2 final. There he goes for his cowboy hat, fitting here in Fort Worth, Texas. And coming up next, we have 62 kilograms. Jakara Winchester taking on Ashlyn Ortega when we come back.
And she is a very solid 62 kilo wrestler, so this will be a good test for Jakara Winchester. Underway, 62 kilogram finals. That's Jakara Winchester in the white and red already. Hands are flying, much like our 57 kilogram match. Aggressive hand fight, tone being set here. Ashlyn Ortega in the blue as she gets to an underhook on the right side. And expect a lot of underhooks in this match. Jakara Winchester, when she gets her left side underhook, she is extremely dangerous. But right now, trying to clear out of this right side hook that Ortega's got has brought Winchester to the zone. But as I say that, Winchester driving back towards the center of the mat. Winchester's so experienced. Five world and Olympic teams for her. Won a world title at 55 kilos back in 2019 and a world silver this year. There, Jakara clubs to that left side underhook. And she's gonna get one for passivity. First warning, next one, she will go on the shot clock. Ortega been on the scene as well. If you watch, scene, if you watch women's nationals, you're gonna see her placing high just about every time. Ooh, nice slide by there, a good attempt. But Ortega able to square up. Noticed watching Winchester throughout the tournament. She's looking for quick scores. She didn't want to get caught underneath at 62 kilos. Be interesting to see how long she stays at 62 or if she makes a descent at any point. And Ortega <laughs> pops her in the face. She's like, whoops. Official going to warn her for that. Back to action we go. Minute 43 to go. Sweep single there. Double to single really for Jakara. Standing single now. Got to beat this wizard from Ortega. Fighting the hands well as Ortega, but circling behind is Jakara Winchester getting closer to a finish. Nothing yet. Threatening a, to cut back the finish. Not there. And now still standing, bringing down to the mat is Ortega trying to wizard pull that down to the mat. But Winchester going to step around. Looks like maybe going to get to rear standing and does and puts her down for just two. Gut wrench off the two mat, out of bounds. So two on the takedown for Winchester. Jumping out to the early lead here. Nice single leg. She had to really work for the finish, and that lead is going to help her, because Ortega's going to have to come at her. That may open up some of her short offense and reattacks. And Ortega been coming at her like a bull, just driving forward, head down. Maybe sensing she has a little bit of a physical advantage up at this weight. Jakara coming up nine or seven kilos, depending on how you want to say it. Either way, she seems to fill out the weight nicely. Doesn't look terribly undersized for this match as we're going to have another warning for Ortega. She's going to just play it right on the line with what she can get away with physically. From the quarterfinals on, Jakara's opponents have been trying to bully her physically, and it hasn't been working. Jakara very heady. Look at that nice stutter fake. Ends up running the corner and going to put her down for four feet to back. Great little exchange there from Jakara. Just used a nice little fake, got the angle, ran behind, and was able to go feet to back for four. And what a way to finish the first period for Jakara. Winchester 6-0 at the break. Yeah, great performance, and Winchester had a tech in the semis. She beat Savannah Cosme. She also beat world teamer Abby Netty in the quarterfinals, so not the first big test for, for Winchester, and she's looking very ready for, for this move up to 62. In her interview after the semifinals, Winchester not interested in talking about her permanent weight class decisions. She just wanted to focus on this weekend, so makes me wonder if She's thinking about 57 or, or, or what? I don't know. And a warning for interlocking the fingers from to Ortega after we're started here in the second period. Ortega's got a hole to dig herself out of, down six to Jakar Winchester, world champion. Former Olympian trying to make her second Olympic team.
Winchester controlling the wrists and fingers there. Ortega pummeling in, gets to an over-under position, or not quite, has that underhook on the left side. Has her arm inside Jakara's. See if Ortega can get to double unders. Looks like she's trying to pummel in. Winchester's grabbing the hand underneath. Hard club there from Winchester. All right, there's an underhook from Ortega on that right side. And Jakara has dictated this match, 6-0 the lead, and Ortega's gonna have to find her way to something. She hasn't had a lot of urgency yet. And Winchester trying to use her speed there. She's, she's going fake into the head, maybe level changer, but then Ortega, as I say that, crowding her. Slide by attempt there from Winchester, not there. Doesn't have the angle to pull it through. Winchester knows she's dictated. She knows she's in control, and it seems like she's just waiting for Ortega to fire something off, and nothing's coming so far. Yeah, Jakar is basically like, I've got a 6-0 lead. I'm a really smart wrestler. I know there's only a few ways she can score, and when she does attack, this happens. Great re-attack for Jakar Winchester. 8-0, now the lead. Helps you understand why Ortega not real quick to attack because, man, a couple go-behinds, four points. Actually, six points that way for Winchester. The last go-behind, she was able to get four. So just 41 seconds to go in this match. Chikara gets up by 10. The match is over. <laughs> They're going to have to go. Yep, caution and one there. Nope, they're gonna white paddle it. We had multiple stoppages for the physicality of Ortega, but with just 30 to go, there's a shot, re-attack, that's it! Exclamation point for Jakara Winchester. There's the ball, 10-0 plus the pin for Jakara Winchester to bring home a title. Perfect game plan from start to finish, Jakara Winchester. Winchester. She looks ready to compete at 62 kilos. She absolutely does. What a performance. Dominant throughout. And what a finish. Let's see that finish. Let's see how Jakara got it done. That was the opening takedown. The first of many points in this re-attack. That's just textbook there. And then the transition, thinking, hey, how can I get more than just two here? Let's go feet to back. There's oh. a left. nail in the coffin there. Pancakes through for four and the fall. And Jakara, your winner here at 62 kilograms. Cowboy hat time now for Jakara. Great way to celebrate a victory. Congrats to Jakara. Great performance there's Coach Terry Steiner. She's uh, he's uh, watched Jakara win a lot of matches. Now. 68 kilograms, we're gonna have a forfeit here. Cheyenne Bowman not gonna be able to wrestle due to injury, so and Mallory Velty is just gonna be coming out taking a forfeit, no match here, as Bowman is out with an injury. Velty, familiar with big stages, so this will be the easiest hand raise she's had on a big stage. Will yeah. the championship by forfeit at 68 kilos. So, Velty, your winner here by forfeit. There's that cowboy hat. Hope Bowman can heal up, and good news for her, she's punched her ticket to the Olympic trials. This will be going down April in State College, Pennsylvania. And so, we're gonna be coming back with 65 kilograms, men's freestyle, Bo Bartlett taking on Andrew Alirez.
right, welcome back. 65 kilogram final time. Let's get it going. First look at Bo Bartlett. Bo Bartlett. Penn State All-American. Bo Bartlett and he has definite freestyle chops as well. There was a moment last yeah. year where he had a win over Nick Lee at his hand raise, but in fact, they scored it wrong, so they went back, reviewed it, took it away. Wrestling from the blue corner, from the Northern Colorado Regional Training Center and Titan Mercury Training Center, Andrew Alvarez. Andrew Alvarez coming to the mat out of Greeley, Colorado. He goes to Northern Colorado, just a few blocks from where he grew up. Your officials for this battle. And now, Trying to take a win here at Senior Nationals. It's a rematch from the NCAA semifinals last March. We are underway 65 kilogram finals. Andrew Alira is in the blue, taking on Bo Bartlett in the red. Two of the brightest young stars in 65 kilos, which is always one of the deepest weight classes for the United States. Nick Lee, currently the number one guy for Team USA, but Yanni Diakamahalas. Always right there, multiple world teams made and a world silver medal to his credit. And Andrew Aliras or Bo Bartlett both trying to join that list. Misdirection single from Bo Bartlett, well defended by Andrew Aliras. Looked like he was going right then left. Both these guys are cat quick. Great leg attackers, especially Aliras. Left handed single leg. He's got a nice high crotch. Bartlett. Can attack both sides really well. Also, and when Alirez gets to that single, he's able to finish high better than just about anybody. And with Alirez, you have to be concerned when he gets that leg attack, which he just did right here. You have to watch the transition from the lace, but first he's got to finish. He's close. Bartlett defending well. Now look, he's trying to catch these ankles on the leg lace. He's got it. Two and two, the call. And just like that, it's 4-4. Four, four. Can he keep his hands connected here? He's got it, this could be a match ender. 6-0, he's gonna continue to work, but now Bartlett able to somehow free his ankles. That is so hard to do, but Bo Bartlett was able to free himself for the time being from Andrew Aliris, but not before Aliris jumps out to a 6-0 lead. That's the danger of that high finish that Aliris has. He threatens with a four point finish in the trip and then he can transition to the lace. He's just a master of that position. And just like that, he's up 6-0. Bartlett driving forward, now cleared out by Alirez. Bartlett in the middle of his collegiate season. Andrew Alirez taking an Olympic red shirt, opting to just focus on freestyle this year and attempts to make the team. Bartlett trying to do both, win an NCAA title and make the Olympic team in April in his current hometown, State College, Pennsylvania. Over under now, 42 seconds to go in the first. Alirez yeah. dominant in the first couple matches here, 10-0 Techs, and then a 4-3 comfort behind win over Alec Pantelio in the semi. And 65 was just an absolute meat grinder. Pantelio, moments away from making the finals and guaranteeing a spot, ends up not qualifying for the Olympic trial, so he'll have to go to the last chance. 17 to go here. It's been the lone attack from Malira as the difference. Standing single, gets the transition to lay 6-0, and now he fires a single to try to get a takedown at the end here, but just runs out of time. It's 6-0, Andrew Alira is at the break. He can get to the leg so fast, and man, incredible to watch Alirez wrestle. Another look at that shot, transition to the lace, Andrew Alirez, and so far this is the difference. Bartlett did a good job grabbing that hand, somehow getting it, getting that, disconnecting that lace. Underway now, second period. Bo Bartlett's got some work to do. Andrew Alir is a period away, and there's a shot. Good, oh man, even better defense. It looked like wow. Bo's gonna be able to come up to his feet with it, but great hips from Andrew Alir squares him up, stands up. 
No finish there for Bo Bartlett, but if you're Bo, you're like, all right, I can get in. He was in really deep for sure. You see the speed of Bo Bartlett as well. When he level changes and goes, among the quicker leg attackers in the country. These guys have been two of the best since their days in high school, and no surprise, they continue to be. Speaking of Bo Bartlett's dad before the tournament, he's like, these two have been going at it since youth wrestling days. And now rekindling re, uh, the rivalry here, the Senior Nationals Finals. A shot from Bartlett caught by Aliris and they're over under stalemated. 2.06 to go in the second. Bartlett really powerful with these double legs, but Aliris is a tough guy to run through. Left handed collar there for Bo Bartlett, but Andrew does a good job clearing out of the tie. Shot from space from Bo Bartlett. Alirez able to back out of it. Great down block there from Alirez. Head hands defense. Still wins at this level. And there's a single leg shot caught by Bo Bartlett. And now short drag by Andrew Alirez. Close to the finish. He gets it. 8 0 the score. 90 seconds to go. And he's. Looks like he's working for a gut wrench this time. Running his feet for that left side gut. Can't get it, 120 to go. Great short drag there from Alirez. Alirez already an NCAA champion, but he's always said freestyle is his best style and this match his post match interview yesterday he said he's dedicated his life to win an Olympic gold and if there were still questions that this guy could be a contender at the senior level he has answered all of them at this point now the question is can he climb the ladder a few more rungs to be the number one guy in America a weight that is still not qualified as we see a shot from Bo Bartlett 30 seconds to go. Club and sweep there for Andrew Alirez. Defended well by Bo Bartlett. You don't want to play the transitive property game too much, but man, Bartlett in a squeaker with Nick Lee. And Alirez widening the gap. Time running out. And this one's going to come to an end. 8-0 for Andrew Alirez, leaving no doubt. 65 kilos, Andrew Alirez. Incredible performance for Andrew Alirez. This weight class, as you mentioned, an absolute meat grinder. And 8-0 uh, win in the finals. Oh, my goodness. To look at some of the best action, and it's going to be featuring Alirez, and there he is with the cowboy hat. What does a match look like between Andrew Alirez and Yanni Diakamahalas? That's what I'm wondering right now. That's what I'm thinking about. Right now, we got to get this weight qualified. Nick Lee and Yanni are going to wrestle off for the Pan Am Olympic spot coming soon. But enough about that. 74 kilograms, Quincy Monday versus Alex Marinelli when we come back.
There you see Quincy Monday. He says he wants to be a matador today against the Bull, Alex Marinelli. We'll see how the Princeton alum can compete against Alex Marinelli. Quincy Monday, the NCAA finalist, now dedicating himself to senior level freestyle. And there was a time where he was probably a little bit more of a 70 kilo than a 74, but he looks every bit of 74 now. Probably perfectly sized for 74 kilograms. Been impressed with Marinelli's freestyle. He was a guy coming up in high school. It, it sounds strange, but back then it wasn't always common for everyone to, to be wrestling freestyle all the time. And Marinelli was one of those guys who's pretty much just a folk style guy, but now has molded his style. He's a good freestyler. Evans by his finals run here at Senior Nationals qualified for the Olympic trials. As we're underway, 74 kilos in the blue. Alex Marinelli, white and red. That's Quincy Monday. Hard hand fight early on here. Look at those snaps from Marinelli. The physicality, that's what Quincy Monday is gonna have to deal with. It's gonna be a hard hand fight. Marinelli is gonna pull on the head, look to post leg attack. Monday fires off a leg attack of his own from space, can't get it. Real clash of styles here. All you'd have to do is look at a photo of these guys' faces before the match to tell the difference in the clash of styles. Marinelli bleeding. Pre-match. Yeah, pre-match out of his ear. He's looking. Shot and short drag attempt there from Quincy Monday, but able to recover well. And they're gonna hit Marinelli for passivity first. If you're Marinelli in this ham fight, you're gonna wanna stay tight. Don't leave an opening for Monday who can score in the blink of an eye. And there's a, he kind of throws off the tie and tries to level check double unders for Marinelli. He is really good from this position. You're gonna see Monday try to get his hips back, can't do it. Or can he, trying to catch the head, but it's gonna be a takedown for Alex Marinelli. Actually not that badly defended by Quincy Monday. He almost caught that head and arm on the way down. Had a pretty good bite on the head, just couldn't get enough leverage to take Marinelli over, but Marinelli's been hitting that trip for a long time. Some of those Vincenzo Joseph, Alex Marinelli upper body ties are, Classics. man, incredible moments, remember. And so for Monday, you gotta stay out of those underhooks. It's just such a dominant position for Alex Marinelli. Attacking legs, looking to counter score Quincy Monday. He can definitely compete with, with Alex Marinelli in those, in those categories. So we'll stalemate it. Minute to go here in the first. Shot from space, just a little too far out is Quincy Monday. As he hides that elbow and looks to come back to his feet, wants to avoid that re-attack of Marinelli. Marinelli just constantly pulling on that head. But Monday. Hard club there from Alex Marinelli. Just ear to ear, tight, tight ties. And we're gonna see passivity warning against Quincy Monday. There's a shot, beautiful leg attack from Quincy Monday. Tries to cut it back. What's gonna be the call here? Too red the call. On the board, on the takedown. Great takedown and Quincy Monday into the lead. Now he's looking to transition to a lace. Can he get it? This looks tight. Trying to take him through. Marinelli defending well. He's got the ankles together. The hands look through, but the bull would not go over. We're gonna run out of time. Great end of the first period. Excitement there. Yeah, you see replay of that shot. Great finish. And it was close to an exposure there for Marinelli. You heard the Iowa fans calling for it, but not awarded. Yeah, I think they're, they're wanting to reward the aggressor, the, in, the initiator of the offense there. Has to be what they're thinking, giving Monday the two, finishing that takedown. Both guys had some damage control there. Monday could have went to his back from that double unders, and that lace could have been lethal. 
for Quincy Monday, but Marinelli was able to defend as we're now back to action, second period as Monday gonna fire again. High crotch now, trying to take him through as Alex Marinelli. I don't think he's gonna be able to do it. Two more for Quincy Monday, back to that leg lace. Can he get the turn this time? Takes him through hand to hand for two more. Just like that, it's six to two, Quincy Monday, and he's not done yet. Goes back the other direction. Wow, beautiful leg lace. 10-2, one more would end it. It's 10-2 in favor of Quincy Monday. Parterre offense, clearly a difference maker here for had, Quincy Monday. Had that leg lace locked so high, almost above the knees, and then when he jumped back the other direction, that was slick. Level changes there from Alex Marinelli. Of course, Quincy Monday, the son of Kenny Monday, American wrestling royalty. And Quincy Monday trying to follow in his father's footsteps, making an Olympic team. It's a re-attack from Quincy Monday, has him in deep on a single leg, trying to cut it back again. Close to the finish is Quincy Monday, trying to defend. Now hooking the elbow is Quincy Monday, can't get it. Trying to counter score is Marinelli. He's trying to get that leg back, but Quincy Monday, dog on the boat for that single leg. He's gonna pull him through. Four Two points at the end, 14-2 final. Quincy Monday, your champion by a tech. Quincy Incredible work for Monday. So good at getting in that leg and then cutting back the other direction. It's a great way to deal with the power of Marinelli. I want another look at that leg lace too. That was, yeah, it's, it's not, the conventional leg lace you, you typically see, but man, is it effective. And as if 74 kilograms couldn't get any tougher, now you add a Quincy Monday, who absolutely looks the part at 74. Here he is. Take a look at some of those scoring sequences. That lock, he's so high on it, and that was right where he jumped back, and another take down there, and here we go. He's above the knees on this lace. Gets it the one time, and Quincy Monday. That's fun, I wanna go back and look at that again. Good Great stuff. performance by Quincy Monday. Coming up next, 76 kilogram action, Marlon Didi and Precious Weezer. Right, we are back for 76 kilogram finals. Here we go. Here comes Marlon Didi. She wrestled for four years at Augsburg where she was a national champion and now for her final year of eligibility transferring to Iowa to be part of the Iowa Women's Wrestling Program, first Power Five school to add women's wrestling. wrestling and her opponent, Precious Weezer, formerly Precious Bell. We've been following the 76 kilogram weight class for a while. 
Precious has been a mainstay. And Precious, a former coach and training partner of Marlon Didi. Yeah, Precious, when Marlon was up at Augsburg, Precious was her coach. And so no familiarity in terms of match competition, but plenty of familiarity from the room. So this will be interesting to watch. Underway, 76 kilogram finals. Marlon Didi in the yellow and red, taking on Precious Weezer in the blue. Four years ago, Weezer won this very event. She got the cowboy hat. Two on one for Didi, cleared out by Precious. Didi, part of just an absolutely loaded Iowa Hawkeye team. But competing at college and competing on the senior level, two different things. She wants to establish herself as a senior level contender. And Precious doing a really good job driving forward. And, well, I say that, but Weezer gets hit for passivity. A little smile from Precious. And that's Alex Marinelli's bloody, eh, I'm not sure where that was. Yeah, yeah, it, was no, his, it, was, ear. it was a cauliflower ear. It was one of those, one of those things they put on your cauliflower ear for 90 yeah. seconds until yeah. it falls off. <laughs> it's, <laughs> yeah, some of the things they put on, it's like, yeah, it's not gonna last. Wow, somebody it looked like somebody brought a hotel towel here to the <laughs> yeah to the venue the for just this occasion. The Fairfield Inn and Suites can be down a, a bath towel, but that's okay. Not all that often you see blood time in a match for blood from the previous match. Every now and again, you get that special treat as we're back underway. 45 seconds into this one. Two on one there for Precious Weezer. Collar tie for Didi. Good job, snapping out of it right to the re-attack for Didi. Drops into the single leg below the knee. Precious looking to counter. Oh, they stop it. I think you can let that one go a little bit, but. Single leg stopped. So we'll continue. 147. Weezer making it to the finals with a semifinal victory over Brooklyn Hayes. Shot there. There's a shot. Didi trying to stuff that attack, but Precious doing a good job running her feet on this double. Switches to a single, now standing. Foot on the outside for Didi. Precious trying to get the finish here and just gonna have to settle for one on the step out. One point. Good persistence there by Weezer. Started on the double, switched to the single standing. Realize that ah, maybe can't get the finish. Let me get one. Minute 20 to go here in the first. Didi made some good adjustments in that position as well. There was a moment where I thought Bell might have the full takedown, but just a one point lead for Weezer. And a little slide by attempt there by Didi. Can't get it, she's close, fires off a single leg. Now looking to counter is Precious Weezer. Can she get it? Marlon Didi doing a good job preventing that go behind for the time being. 43 seconds to go in the first L. Stale made it back up we go. As we're in the final minute of this first period. Left-handed collar tie again for Precious Weezer. If you're Didi, you know you can get to the leg and now it's a matter of figuring out. Oh, a little the pop finish. there. Yeah, that was that was right in the face. Yeah. There's a shot. Single leg from Weezer. Trying to come up on the other side, throwing it by with the underhook, stepping in, stepping in. Can she get it? No. Marlon Didi doing a good job avoiding giving up the points there. Three seconds to go, short time remaining, and that's gonna do it. 
1-0 for Precious Weezer at the break. Didi trails, she had to come from behind in her semifinal match and so not a position she's unfamiliar with. She had a really nice performance at the NWCA All-Star Classic, getting a win over the number one ranked NAIA wrestler, McBride of Life. Trying to keep this hot streak going. Dee Dee talked at the All-Star Classic about just what it's meant for her to wrestle for Iowa, compete in Carver Hawkeye Arena in front of about 8,000 fans. Yeah, and incredible. Be another great moment for her. She could get a win, but right now, staring down the barrel of a 1-0 deficit. Second period now underway, and it's Weezer picking up where she left off, controlling center, driving towards the zone. Didi does a nice job kind of snapping out, but throws it by. Oh, wow, feet to back. And Didi in big trouble here, close to the fall. The official working to get in position, and there we'll have the fall. Match over. Precious Weezer, your champion. You saw Weezer look for that earlier in the match, wasn't able to get it, and this time she got every bit of it, able to get the finish. Precious Weezer, two quads in a row with the cowboy hat. And so just a 1-0 score at the end, and the match concludes with this big throw from Precious Weezer. Does a great job, used that left-sided hook, threw her through, got the fall. Now she gets a cowboy hat. She's got the cowboy hat, and I'm curious what she's gonna do with that cowboy hat, because four years ago, she gave it to Mark Bader. I know, and someone let her know, I, you know, I love a cowboy hat. Yeah, well, you know. She should keep this one. She should. At this point, she could have a collection. I know. Now she's, you know. There she is. Congratulations to Precious Weezer, your champion here. She's looking to make the Olympic team. 76 kilograms. When we come back, 86 kilograms. Mark Hall versus Alex Deringer. All right, welcome oh. back. There you see Mark Hall making his way. Mark Hall, Penn State NCAA champion, now 
I'm a coach at Penn, training at the Pennsylvania Regional Training Center. They've built quite a squad over there. Certainly one of the best RTCs in the country out there in Philadelphia. Alex Deringer. Alex Deringer, the three-time NCAA champion, Oklahoma State. Now trains Cliff Keen Wrestling Club in Michigan. It's one of those senior level matches that, you know, she's looking at their college careers. Dream match, how are we yep. gonna see it? Well, here it is. Here it is, underway. 86 kilograms, Alex Daringer, double leg right away for two. What a start. Patented double from Alex Daringer. How many times have we seen him post, drive, Fast double and gets the lift. And really, Mark Hall did a great job not exposing their feet to back. Went down, found the mat just two. But a great start for Alex Daringer in the blue, taking on his opponent in the red. That's Mark Hall. Daringer really setting the tone. And Mark Hall actually, oh, good job fighting in there for Mark. Alex is, loves to get to that underhook on the one side, gets inside control of the elbow with the other. And he gets a lot of his offense going from that position. He can go single leg, high crotch, double, or he can dump you straight to your back from this position, that left-sided underhook, where a lot of his offense comes from. Mark Hall can wrestle from everywhere. He's a three-time age-level world champion. Once at the cadet level, twice at the junior level at 74 kilograms. Outgrew that weight and is up at 86. Trying to make his first senior level world team as his ringer. You saw Ringer's right hand, that's what he's looking to post with. Hall's had to come from behind already in this tournament. He actually trailed two to one to Connor Mirasola, Connor Mirasola, the Penn State recruit, and not gonna try to come from behind for a second straight match. Hall trying to dig that underhook. He's great from the upper body ties as well. But Ringer does a good job clearing out of it. Ringer probably up more full-sized 86 than Mark. Mark's been trying to grow fully into this weight class for a few years now. And they're gonna hit Mark for passivity. No, they're not. Another shot for Alex Daringer. Double leg, trying to get exposure. He's gonna get it. And Hall's gotta be careful he doesn't give up more exposure. It's 4-0 lead now for Alex Daringer. And he's content to kind of just hang low there and not fight through, and try to get more. Yeah, Hall never let go of that chest wrap, and maybe why he gave up the points initially, but probably also why Daringer gave up on the position. Much is made of, of Daringer's power, but there you've seen this, both his attacks and the speed. When he pulls the trigger, he is quick to the legs. Forty to go. Here in the first period, it's a 4-0 lead, a pair of twos for Ringer, the difference as Mark Hall tries to get himself back in this match. And as David mentioned, can't rule out a comeback if Mark Hall's involved in the match. Daringer really pulling on that head of Hall. Thumb blocking on the right side as well. Final 10 seconds of this mat, or this period, excuse me. What a testament to the depth of wrestling in the United States. Yeah. Mark Hall and Alex Daringer, neither one has made a world team. Two, two guys that nobody would have been surprised if they did make a world team at some point. Shane Sparks mentioned it on, on FRL last week. Ringer, in his mind, one of the best to ever, to never make a world team. And at first you're like, no. And then you think about it, it's like, man, he's on the short list. Three-time NCAA champion. You look at how he was able to compete with Kyle Dake. He's beaten a lot of world medalists in his day. But just hard to make the team here in America. We're so good. And right now, David Taylor is the man at this weight class. Not just domestically, but in the world. He's the pound for pound number one wrestler in America, David Taylor. You mentioned Mark Hall's age level world titles. Those translate on the senior level. Oh, oh throws wow. it by that left sided underhook. 
puts him down, and there's another takedown, 6-0 for Derringer. That's the power I was talking about. Out of that left-sided underhook, throws it by. So much pressure there, and he gets to a 6-0 lead, 220 to go. At times in his career, Derringer has struggled with injuries. It's nice to see him look as healthy as yeah. he does right now, because he's got access to all the tools. Two oh eight to go here in the second. Double leg from space, but you see Ringer able to catch it and he able to put that left sided underhook right back there. Pulls on the tricep for the other side. Back up to their feet they go. And for Hall, you gotta start thinking, all right, what's my it's my go-to takedown, and how can I transition to a turn from that takedown? Shot from space. Not there. Ringer able to circle out of it. We've seen some vintage Ringer. The most vintage Mark Hall would be a mixer, but I don't see, I don't see that in the cards, probably. Yep, he's won a lot of big matches with that cement mixer. But you got to get Ringer in a pretty compromised position in short offense to hit it. Now a minute to go. Another single leg for Mark Hall. It's moving Ringer fairly well, but just cannot get to the legs. Another shot for Mark Hall. He's just having a really hard time getting close enough for a shot. Getting to the legs of Alex Derringer has been a huge challenge for Mark Hall throughout this match. And now he's got 30, 30 seconds, seconds to go. Ringer, seconds. half a minute away from a title. Ringer hadn't even stepped in the zone much this no. match. Great positioning here for Alex Derringer. Another shot from Mark Hall. Ringer does a good job catching it. Five seconds, one final shot for Mark Hall, but he knows it's over. Time and expires, 6-0 win for Cliff Keen Wrestling Club's Alex Derringer. And it truly was a dominant performance from the very start of the match all the way through. Alex Derringer. Derringer had it all working today against a really tough opponent in Mark Hall. Great performance, vintage Ringer for sure. Joe Russell and Bill Zadek head out there. Gonna give him his stop sign. I wonder how many of those he's got. Gotta imagine it's quite a few. Ringer been winning for such a long time. Was a beast in high school, in the state of Wisconsin. Made his way to Oklahoma State where he had a legendary career three time NCAA champion and now adds a senior nationals title to his mantle and that was the Opening score for Ringer. A very powerful takedown he got here. Strong performance for Alex Derringer. So we're coming up on the final two matches of this afternoon's finals 97 kilograms. Colin Moore versus Nate Jackson when we return.
right, welcome back. 97 kilogram final time. Should be a good one. Colin Moore and Nate Jackson and they wrestled plenty. I don't think they have wrestled at 97 kilos though. Representing the Ohio RTC and Tight Mercury Wrestling Club in the red, Colin Moore. There he is, Colin Moore coming to the mat. He has been towards the top of either 92 or 97 kilos throughout his senior level career. Hadn't climbed to that top rung yet. And it's because we have medalists in his way. There's Nate Jackson, Moore's opponent. Jackson has never Jackson. beaten Colin Moore to my knowledge and trying to make today the day that he does it. Colin Moore, multiple All-Americans at Ohio State University at 197 pounds. Nate Jackson wrestled collegially at 174. Now made his way up to 97 kilograms, 213 pounds. He fills it out well, as you can see. We are underway here, 97 kilogram final. Jackson in the blue, Moore in the red. Yeah, Nate Jackson looks plenty big for this weight class. Jackson getting his fakes going. Shot attempt there, now trying to work from this underhook, trying to pull Colin Moore down. Moore, hold on to that tricep. He's got a good dump from there. Moore trying to close that distance, moving forward, and Moore gonna be worrying for passivity. He doesn't want to bite on one of those Nate Jackson fakes because Jackson can run through people. Yeah, very powerful double leg. Colin's got a lot of attacks. He's got duck unders, low level attacks, outside step attacks, and a great fireman's carry. Minute 20 in, no points yet. They're indicating towards Colin Moore for passivity. Double to single for Nate Jackson. Well defended, double unders for Nate Jackson. And he's gonna throw a bye for two. Great sequence by Nate Jackson. Started with a leg attack, double to single, double underhooks, throws it by. And next thing you know, he's out to a 2-0 lead. And he pulled the trigger at exactly the right time. They were about to put or about to warn Colin Moore for passivity and would have stopped all that action. Good job by the Matt official letting the action continue even though they had the consensus for the passivity warning. Let the action happen. Minute to go here in the first period. Another shot. have to come from behind now in this match. And he's controlling center a little bit better than he was in the first couple minutes of the match. Moore closing the gap a little bit. Good snaps from Nate Jackson. Twenty seconds to go. Double leg again from Nate Jackson. This time, Colin does a good job clearing out of it. More pressure and forward. But he has not attacked much. It's been Nate Jackson really kind of controlling center well, firing off the attacks, and it's a 2-0 lead for Nate Jackson at the break. Used to seeing a lot more attacks out of Colin Moore. A period without Colin Moore locked on a leg is, is pretty unusual. He's being just a little more respectful of the, the counter attack, the re-attack ability of Nate Jackson. But to your point, it is rare to see Colin Moore this subdued offensively. And there's that opening attack from Nate. Started with a single. 
comes up to the double underhooks and got the takedown. Second period underway. Colin Moore got a little work to do. Two point leads vanish fast in freestyle wrestling. There's a shot. And there you see Nate Jackson immediately pulling, circling to the left, trying to reattack. Not there though. Yeah, good angle, just not quite the angle he needed to get to the leg. Single leg for Nate Jackson. Another shot, double to single for Nate. Trying to lift is Nate Jackson. And working to counter there is Colin Moore. Nothing yet. Pops his head to the outside is Nate. And they'll stalemate it. Stopping the action there. 2.14 to go in the second. Thought they might not let that go for a little yeah. bit longer. I think they could have. I was curious to see what Jackson was gonna do with the head to the outside. And More pressuring forward well again. And he might be about to go on the shot clock. Single leg, <laughs> every time Moore's about to go on the shot clock, Nate Jackson is firing. And now looking to counter it is Colin Moore. Can he get it? He had a bite on that ankle, but Jackson doing a good job controlling that single leg. Now circling the other way is Colin Moore. He's gonna get the takedown, 2-2. He's into the lead. Both takedowns scored when they were about to put somebody in there. for go. two more. Colin Moore, great parterre offense. You're seeing it. 6-2, can he get another one? Yes, he can, 8-2. The guts won't stop coming. 10-2, just like that. A takedown and four guts. And Colin Moore goes from down two to up eight in the blink of an eye. Nate Jackson, about four minutes of perfect execution of a great match strategy and almost had a passivity call. Colin Moore though got on top and he'll make you pay. The guts start coming and they don't stop coming. And there's a single leg from Colin, defended well by Nate Jackson who now, he's got to get real busy. Two more points for Colin Moore in the match. Technical superiority. Jackson knows he can score. He's got to pull the trigger. Single leg attempt there, can't get in. Now looking to run behind and Colin Moore in position to finish here. Finishes backside almost, they haven't given it yet. Two, and there it is, match over. Colin Moore, 12 unanswered for the Tech. In a match Nate Jackson led for the majority of the time, it's Colin Moore coming from behind. That gut wrench so dangerous. And getting the gut so many times with Jackson's head that close to the out of bounds line was key. Yeah, he was able to change directions on that gut wrench to get a couple extra points. And then Jackson just didn't have the second period he needed to win this match. And that was the takedown that got it going. And then immediately, you gotta be really active underneath against Colin Moore. And he got his gut wrenches. And there was the final score, I believe. And we come back, final match of the evening, Don Bradley taking on Christian Lance.
All right, we're back. Don Bradley, uh, he just came right out. He didn't. He didn't need the pomp and circumstance, and uh, so he just he just ran right out to the mat. When you've been doing it as long as Don Bradley, I guess you do it however you want to do it. Yeah. You know, you could tell him. Go back, David. You want to ask him? I. You know I'll, what? I'll, I'll ask, ask him. him. I'll, maybe after the match. Wrestling while wearing blue from the Sun Kiss Kids Wrestling Club, Christian Lance. And Christian. his opponent, Christian Lance, making his way to the mat. Cornered by Tervel Delagnev. A familiar opponent of Don Bradley, now retired, is Tervel. Now coaching Christian Lance, who will be wrestling in the Olympic trials. And we are underway. Senior National Finals, 125 kilograms. And Don Bradley, the definition of a veteran at this level, wrestled in, I believe the stat is 17 US Opens. It's incredible. And not only, he's not just entering, He's competing, competing well, placing, winning. Just a mainstay at heavyweight in America for so long. He won this event four years ago. Trying to do it again. And Bradley mentioned that he actually trained a little bit with Christian Lance way back when Christian Lance was 18. And Lance said he kind of looks up to Bradley as one of his wrestling heroes. And now Bradley won for passivity. Lance said that it was Bradley vouching for him that helped him move from Division II Fort Hayes State to Nebraska. Of course, Lance unheralded, made his way to Nebraska where he became a Division I All-American. Coach Mark Manning there does a great job for the Cornhuskers. Don Bradley on staff at Missouri. Coach Brian Smith, great program as well. Bradley, NCAA champion for Brian Smith in early parts of the turnaround, and now it's gonna be passivity for Lance. Both guys have been warned. The next morning, we'll put somebody on the clock. And trying to find that angle is Dom Bradley. Left-handed collar there for Dom. And we're gonna have a passivity warning against Christian Lance. He's on the shot clock. He'll have 30 seconds to score or Don Bradley will score a point. Bradley just tying Lance up and Bradley's such a hard guy to move. And good level change from Don Bradley. Doesn't fully commit to the shot. There's the shot clock point for Don Bradley into the lead, 1-0. For Lance, it's gonna be interesting to see what his strategy is to try to get through the powerful Don Bradley. First period, a lot about the ham fight, pulling on the head, trying to wear each other down. Final 10 here in the first. Points at a premium so far, but we've seen things can change fast in that second period. And we'll hope for more points in our final period of this afternoon's action. And that's the break. Don Bradley with a 1-0 lead. Tervel Delagnev over there with Christian Lance. It's another guy with some D2 experience that was able to translate that to high level success. Tervel Delagnev. Wrestled in medal matches for ever. It felt like a decade. A couple quads, it felt like. A mainstay at 125 kilograms before retiring after the 2016 Olympic Games. Back to action, second period. Lance trailing Don Bradley, one to zero. Oh, single leg, almost had it. Did Don Bradley, couldn't get it, and again, not there. 
If you're Bradley, the thing you gotta be aware of is that activity clock, and he is making a point, taking ground, control and center, and also those snaps, so. Picking up a little bit, but no one able to get that angle for the leg attack. Lance fires, but now this is where Don Bradley can really make you pay the price of attacking. But the quick stalemate, no score. Lance getting stuck underneath and not getting scored on. That's a moral victory for him. We'll see if he continues to fire those low level attacks. Just like his coach, Travell, used to fire so consistently. And they're gonna hit Lance for passivity. And if you're wondering why, it's, if you're not controlling center the way Don Bradley is, if your butt is more towards the edge, if there's no points going up, you're more than likely to put on the shot clock and shoot, he does. Christian Lance, but now extremely extended, tough position for Lance as Bradley gonna try to make him feel all 125 kilos as he looks to circle behind, but they'll stalemate it. Tough lock on that leg for Christian Lance. Not a lot of guys get that extended on a guy like Don Bradley without giving up any points. And the point goes up, 2-0 lead for Don Bradley. But a takedown for Lance would put him in the lead on criteria. Looking like they want to hit Bradley now for passivity, and they will. They're going to. But not really enough time in the period for them to hit him twice, so Lance still needs to find another point. Underhook to that right side for Christian Lance. See if this is a viable option for him as he drives Bradley towards the zone. But look at Bradley circling back in. Make sure you stick around for outstanding Agile for a really big man is Don Bradley. Right See if Lance can get back to the body, he goes underhook. There's our third shot clock point. Another shot from Christian Lance, he's a point away. If he gets one, he's in the lead. But another shot countered by Dom Bradley. Underhooks over under now. And for Lance, it's kind of desperation time. Might want to try something here as he pummels in, double underhooks is what he's trying to get to, but Bradley's so good at fighting out of bad positions. Now just six seconds to go. Another shot from Christian Lance. And Bradley gonna circle out of it and win two to one. Another senior nationals title for Don Bradley. He's headed back to the Olympic trials. And it wasn't, wasn't pretty, but he got it done. Congrats to Dom, another title, another stop sign, incredible career. He punches his ticket for the final. Awards. And with that, the afternoon's events are done. Appreciate you guys tuning in so much as we're gonna see Don Bradley get his stop sign and cowboy hat. We'll leave you with a few highlights of the afternoon's action. Appreciate you guys tuning in. We've got more action, more live events and coming at you week after done. week on Flow Wrestling. We appreciate you tuning in. For David Bray, I'm Christian Piles, and we'll see you next time.